Hi, this is part two of our lab build out series. In this series, we will be adding additional managing capabilities to our network where we can manage the domain via the RSAT tools built into Server Manager, as well as exploring options with Project Honolulu. So let's go ahead and get started. Hi, so today what we'll be doing on my server here is that we'll be um, further adding additional management tools to the system so we can do remote management across the domain. So if, you're, if you've been following this series so far, in, in our last video, we uh, created a new domain controller, a single domain controller, um, and configured it, added static IP addresses, and um, got it fully up and running and functional. And then we installed um, this Manage One server and joined it to the domain. And then we also install a few um, RSAT based uh, management tools to the system. So now what we want to do, we want to add additional things to this. So um, um, since the last time we watched, I've actually added another hard drive to the system. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and format and, and manage that drive. So what I did right there, I right clicked on the start menu and then I went to disk management, which brings me to this screen. So we see here I have this offline 127 gigabyte disk. So I'm gonna go ahead and just bring that disk online, right click again, initialize that disk. I'm gonna leave it at GPT as far as to how it's gonna be partitioned. I'll go ahead and say okay. And now I just wanna go ahead and format that drive. So I'm gonna just leave everything at default here. I'm gonna E drive, that's fine. Um, I'll name the value label app since I had attention, I'll saw my applications on this drive. And I'll say next and then say finish. And then I'll just go hit through and quickly try to format that drive. Uh, and it is complete. So now what I want to do, I want to um, get Project Honolulu installed on this particular server. Um, so what I need to do here, I need to actually get the media uh, onto the system. Um, so Let's do that. So we'll go ahead and create this downloads folder. So I've already copied the Project Honolulu binaries from another system in my environment. And so I downloaded those from the internet and I'm just gonna go ahead and paste that here. All right. Got that done. So now we're just going to go ahead and launch the Project Honolulu um, binary and run. So this is a pretty quick setup. So let's let's time it. So we're at, shouldn't take us more than about 30, 40 seconds to get this installed typically. So I'm going to go ahead and allow Project Honolulu to modify this machine. So I'll, I'll go ahead and create a desktop shortcut. That's fine. Let's say next. And um, currently, I don't have a certificate that I can use on this system um, that's issued from my CA um, because in this environment, I actually do not have a CA currently. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and install this with a self-signed certificate. And then by the time that 60-day window come up, um, there will probably be another um, version of um, Project Honolulu available. Um, so at that time, when I reinstall, um, I should, by that time, have a CA um, deployed within my environment, and then I'll use a, a real valid certificate that's um, authoritative within my domain. But for now, we'll just stay with the self-sign and go ahead and say install. And it's going through. Shouldn't take too long. I already just saw the Project Honolulu um, icon pop up. Still installing. It's taking a little bit of time. Shouldn't take too much longer though. There we go, and we're done. So hit finish. All right, so now I can just go ahead and jump right into Project Honolulu. And actually, uh, yeah, I'm probably going to get an error here because this is an Internet Explorer. So I probably re really want to access this from a remote system that has um, um, that has like Microsoft Edge or Chrome or something similar on it. But I'll go ahead and try to log in with here. But I, I believe I'm going to get an error message. I don't believe we really support Internet Explorer. Um, I'll go ahead and close that out. 
yeah, I probably need to turn off some of the security settings in Internet Explorer here. Um, this, is, this is actually the first time I launched that on this um, particular system. Yeah, it looks like we're not getting much of anything there. So let me let me go and do that. Let's jump over to Server Manager and let's temporarily turn off um, the enhanced security. And let's just try that again. But uh, again, I don't think it's going to work. Um, I don't think we support. I'm going to say we don't really support um, Internet Explorer currently. So yeah, I think that maybe we're getting a pretty much getting a blank page here. So let's go ahead and cancel out of that. Um, how else can I show you that? I currently don't have a Windows 10 desktop in this environment. So that's maybe something that I probably should do. Um, I probably need to add a Windows 10 desktop to this environment so we can kind of see, see um, Access Project Honolulu as opposed to accessing it locally from the server that it's running on. Um, but that'll give you an idea of how quickly you can get it installed. Um, I guess I could go and download like Chrome or, or some other browser. Let's, let's do that. Let's go ahead and download Chrome. All right, yeah, it's really pumping Edge here. <laughs> I'm taking up half the page and download Edge, use Edge instead. But um, in this case, I, I, I like Edge, but I'm gonna go ahead and use Chrome for the purpose of this. Since currently I'm running as administrator and I don't, um, um, Edge is one of those modern apps, so technically it doesn't run as um, administrator. Um, so, We'll give this a few minutes here and then we'll be right back after we get Chrome fully installed. So I went ahead and downloaded and installed um, Google Chrome. So now let's go ahead and try to access Project Honolulu locally on the server again. So right, right off the bat it's going to tell me hey that certificate, that self-signed certificate that we have, uh, it doesn't really trust it. Um, but that's fine. We'll, we'll go ahead and um, accept that risk. So I'll go ahead and hit advance and then proceed. All right, and then it's gonna go ahead and prompt me for some credentials. So I'm gonna use my administrator account. Go ahead, log in. So now we're in. So welcome to Project Honolulu. It's a new web-based management solution for Microsoft built to modernize and simplify administration of your Windows data center. Um, so we'll just go ahead next through this little tour they have. Um, so it's just saying, hey, help us build a future of management. So they want your feedback. Um, you run into bugs or new features or things that you like to have. Um, definitely use the user voice to let them know. Go ahead, hit finish. And now we're in. So right now you can see I'm managing the single server, manage one. I manage it um, through my administrator account that I added. Um, so now that I'm in here, what I can do, I can go ahead and add a server. So you have four different options, Windows Server Connection, PC Connection, Failover Clusters, Hyperconverged Cluster. Since I have a pretty brand new domain, uh, I only have two servers that are in domain, um, the Manage One, which is the one I'm on, and then I also have a domain controller. So I'm gonna go ahead and add this server connection. And then I'm gonna add the server name DC1. All right, so it quickly gave me an access denied on that because uh, I currently haven't provided any credentials for that. So I'm going to allow it to use my Windows account for this connection. All right, and now it's there. So I'll go ahead and click on it. Um, it's asking for my credentials again. Um, I'll go ahead and just type that in again. So one of the options you have here is that as I add additional servers here, what I can tell us to do is that if I want to use those credentials for all connections, I can I can do that. Um, but uh, one thing I just forgot, um, actually on this network, I actually have 
another server that's named DC1 and this system is currently connected to that network so I'm gonna pause the video for a second and adjust that um, due to um, I temporarily connected this system to a different network so it can get access out to the internet so I need to actually revoke those permissions right now <laughs> so let me let me go and do that real quick all right, I'm back. So what I, what I did, I went ahead and, and revoked those permissions out to the internet for this system since I wanted to be isolated to this network, at least for now, until I officially grant this network access through its own like gateway and router and all, all of that um, to get out to the internet. Um, so just go ahead and hit add again, add server connection, and we're gonna do DC1 again. So this time, this should be the correct DC1 and not the one um, that's part of a different domain. So I'm going to provide those credentials. And um, actually, the other thing I want to do, I'm just going to put the fully qualified name there. And then I'm going to go ahead and provide those credentials again. I can type. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and submit that. Uh, why do I keep getting prompted? Yeah, I don't think I, I don't think that happened in Edge as much, but um, that may be something they're working on. But let's do it one more time. And I'm gonna check this box to use the credentials for all connections and go ahead and hit continue. There we go. So now it looks like we're we're getting in this time. So what that's gonna do is gonna go ahead and connect up to my DC one. Um, system is going to grab some um, real-time statistics off that system and show me various different things about it. So I'm um, right here. Um, so remember, I just installed this domain controller um, pretty much a few minutes ago. Um, I didn't do anything with the Windows firewall. I, I didn't install any agent. I didn't install any software. I pretty much installed the domain controller, um, made it a domain controller, and pretty much that's it. Um, haven't touched it, had it, haven't had any other service accounts, hadn't modified firewalls, haven't, haven't done anything else to it. You can see now uh, we can fully manage the system remotely using Project Honolulu as well as with the RSAT tools that I've installed locally on, on this system here. Um, so you can see you can see some various different aspects of the system, what version of the OS is running, how much space it has, how much memory it has, um, things like that. So if we go a little bit further down here. Uh, yeah, this is kind of like I need the a little bit higher resolution or something here. So let me see if I can bump my resolution up a little bit. Maybe 1280. I mean, 1920 by 1080. Okay, that's looking better now. Yeah, I bumped up the resolution a little bit. It was kind of kind of crunched down in there a little bit. Um, so yeah, we're looking at um, now we're in Project Honolulu, looking at my domain controller. Um, within like a few minutes after um, deploying it and now it's fully remotely manageable through Project Honolulu. So you can see real-time streaming of like CPU, memory, um, what the network adapters are doing. Um, you also can enable, if you want to see disk metrics, you can enable that as well. Um, you can do things like restart, shut down the system, um, edit the computer ID if I need to rename this domain controller to something else. Well, um, to, to, don't typically rename domain controllers, but if this was a regular system, uh, I, I could um, go in there and, and rename it or remove it from the domain or join it to a domain. Other things I could do, um, go ahead and play with the environmental variables if I need to do that. Enable remote desktop. So currently remote desktop is not enabled on my domain controller. And um, for the most part, I, I probably won't really need it too much. So for right now, I'll leave it disabled. I'm going to see how that works out to try to for the most part, fully remotely manage this domain controller um, since it doesn't have a GUI anyway. Um, so I would have to do a lot of stuff through PowerShell mainline if I do it um, locally anyway. Um, so I'll um, try to do those things um, remotely when I can. So um, yeah, so uh, right now at this point, I can kind of jump into any of these other um, features that are available here. So I can check out the things related to certificates. I can browse the file system if I needed to do that. Um, just click on files and then I can see the C drive over there on my domain controller. I can browse browse that fully. And if I need to open up additional firewall ports or anything like that, I can do that from here as well. Um, modify the incoming outgoing rules um, very easily. Um, things like that. Um, I actually have a PowerShell shell here as well. Um, so this is actually my first time actually clicking on that in this from 
Chrome. I've never used it in Chrome, so let's see what that experience is like. If it's much different than what I've experienced in Edge, or if it's pretty much exactly the same. Um, so so far, it seems pretty much the same. Um, so uh, that's that's pretty good. Um, so I can quickly see the IP address. Um, so I just see my, one mistake. I, I actually need to fix that. Um, that gateway is no longer valid. Um, so sconfig doesn't seem to quite like working this way. I'm gonna try it. See if it can do it. Nope. Looks like you can't. So RDP would come in handy for doing sconfig because you see here what happened here. I ran sconfig. I got the output of the command, but I can't actually interact with it um, through through PowerShell. So that that is probably one use case where you probably still want to RDP into the box and then um, run the sconfig and do your modifications there. Um, but if you're very good at PowerShell, you can obviously um, make these changes directly with PowerShell um, if you know the commands. Um, fortunately for me, I, I don't know those exact commands, um, so I'm going to do the easy route and I'm going to um, fix that problem through um, pretty much from locally on the system. All right, but I just kind of want to quickly show you that. Um, other things, roles and features. Um, so on this domain controller, one thing that I do want to do, I do want to um, make it a, also a DHCP server. Um, so I can have some DHCP functionality for um, this private network that I have um, for this um, LewisTechViews.int domain. Um, so what I can do, once I click on roles and features, I can just scroll down, find the role I want. So I want a DHCP server. I can go ahead and click a checkbox next to it. And then I just simply hit install. It'll go through and check and see if there's any other dependencies that I need um, before that can be installed. And then I also get the option if I want to reboot, if this install required a reboot, I can have it automatically reboot the server for me. Um, I'm going to go ahead and check that box, but I don't believe DHCP server requires reboot. And I'm going to go ahead and say continue installation and say yes. So um, what you see up here at the top, I get a little notification saying it's installing roles and features. And then once that fully is installed and the server confirms that, I'll, I'll get another little notification back telling me, hey, that, that task was successful. So that task that you can see here, once I click on the little bell here at the top, I can see kind of near real time um, progress of that task. So we can see here now it's successful. It's fully installed um, the DHCP server role on that server. So um, from here, I can't, uh, currently we, there's no way to manage DHCP from here. I can install the role, but I can't manage the role. Um, but remember, I'm working remotely right now, right? Um, and I previously installed the RSET tool. So what I can do, I can go ahead and say manage, um, well, not manage tools, go to DHCP, all right? And then I can go ahead and add a server. Um, that server was DC1. So once that, those services and things start up, I should be able to connect to the DCP server. There you go. And there you go. So I'm, now I'm connected and, and managing that DC1 DHCP server role that I just installed. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and authorize this DHCP server or this domain controller to be a DHCP server on the domain. right? And so once I have it authorized, what I can do is go down to my IPv4 settings and then I can create a new scope. All right, so I'm going to name the scope. Um, what is this? Um, Lewis Tech Views, um, let's say main network is what I'll call this. And we were using 192.168.150.1.0.0.1.0. All right, do that one. Say next. So I do want to add some exclusion. So I want to exclude my um, obviously my domain controller IP address, and I'll probably at some point add another domain controller. So I'll, I'll probably name that dot two. So I'll exclude those two IP addresses, and then manage one currently has a static IP address of dot ten. So I'll also exclude that IP address. Um, that way, so my domain controller, I mean my DHCP server, does not try to distribute those IP addresses to anything else on my network. All right, so I'll go ahead and save that. I'll leave my lease duration to the eight days default. And do I want to configure scope? Yes, yes, do that. So currently, I still don't have a default gateway on this network. Um, so I'll need to 
I'll probably come back and change these settings once I do have a valid default gateway for this network. Um, but at this point in time, I still don't have that. So I'll just leave that blank for now. And then for um, yeah, parent domain, I'll leave that as lewistechviews.int. Um, DNS server will be the one DNS server or domain controller I have in my environment. I'll go ahead and say next. I don't have any Win servers, so I'll go ahead and say next again. And I'll go ahead and activate the scope and say finish. All right, so now I'm um, I'm fully up and, and available. So any anything else that joins this network now, um, they they will have access to DHCP services just like that. And again, did all this remotely, installed the role remotely um, using Project Honolulu, and then I just connected to it using the RSET tools that I have installed on the same system to get that up and going. Um, so other things that um, uh, probably we'll do in another video where we may show um, making my um, making my DHCP role more highly available. Um, again, again, I'm also making my domain controller role more highly available because right now I only have the single server that's supporting um, DHCP, it's DNS, as well as um, the Active Directory services. So if this VM goes down, then um, those services are unavailable for any other system that I add to this particular network. So got that going. So yeah, I wanted to just kind of show you that. Um, managing systems with um, Project Honolulu, uh, managing domain controller um, remotely, and um, doing it quick and easy. Hopefully, hopefully this video has been useful. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.